and I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit. Then I'm gonna mash this stuff in, trying to get it out. There's one. When it's done, you won't see any of the fish in there. So now we're gonna take the back of a spoon and we're just gonna press it into the wooden bowl. Bate, bate, bate. That's good. And then a little bit of the Worcestershire like that. That's plenty of yellow mustard. The best olive oil that you can afford. Keep going. You can put in as much as you want or as little as you want. Spun and then I chilled it in a refrigerator because nobody likes a salad that's not cold. All right, super easy, cheap, delicious pad thai. You're gonna have to make this one. Get the pad thai noodles, get them in hot water, soak them for a little bit. This is the brand I use, Asian Store. Oil in the wok, chicken cut it up. This is the pad thai sauce right here, Asian Store. Add two tablespoons to that, or three to taste. All right, drain out the noodles. Then you're gonna add them to the mix. Then you're going to crack an egg in there after you mix it up. If you're dope, you'll add some spice. Let that cook, get some char. Then you're gonna add some bean sprouts to the mix. I didn't have lime or anything, so I threw some lemon. This is a freestyle, by the way, but it turned out amazing. Peep that. I actually really love broccoli, but steaming it is bland AF, and roasting it takes a long ass time. How about we try some five minute skillet broccoli instead? Chop your broccoli into small florets, heat olive oil in a skillet, and get it really hot. Toss the broccoli in a single layer and let it sear for one minute. Season with salt, then give it a stir. Pour in half a cup of vegetable broth and immediately cover. Reduce heat to medium low and let it cook for three minutes. Remove from heat. I enjoyed mine with some toasted sesame oil and toasted sesame seeds for an Asian -y vibe. This ground beef is vegan, and yes, you can make it yourself at home. When I first started my plant-based journey, red meat was the first thing to go because of its heavy environmental impact. For context, beef results in up to 105 kilograms of greenhouse gases for just 100 grams of protein, while tofu produces less than 3.5 kilograms for the same amount. If you're interested in swapping out your beef, these tofu crumbles go amazing in pasta sauce, salads, and more. Hey guys, tonight I'm gonna show you how to make the most flavorful Italian beef sandwiches. I picked up this beautiful cut of beef from the grocery store. I'm gonna cut off the excess fat, and this is actually a bit too much for my family, so I'm gonna cut it in half and use the other half for another time. So I'm throwing it about a pound to my crock pot. I'm gonna add two cups or one can of beef broth, one of these packets of zesty Italian salad dressing mix, half a jar of sliced pepperoncinis with juice, and a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. Give it a little mix, cover and cook on low for about seven to eight hours. Your house is gonna smell amazing. When it's done, I like to take my beef out onto a plate and shred it, look how tender that is. And to prep our sandwiches, I've got a nice hoagie roll. I'm gonna put it under my broiler to get nice and toasty. Add a layer of your beef, and then I like to put a little more pepperoncinis, that's optional. And then we're gonna go in with some provolone. Put it back under your broiler just until the cheese is nice and melted like this. Make sure to dip it in that juice and it is so delicious. If you struggle with your weight, then this video is for you. This healthy, crispy chicken wrap is going to satisfy your cravings for any junk food. I eat it a lot, and it's so crazy to me how you can make things like this that taste so good and they're completely healthy for you. Why is it healthy? I breaded the chicken with some cornflakes and baked it instead of fried it. For the sauce, I used light mayonnaise. This entire lavash bread wrap is around 110 calories. Extra virgin olive oil is a healthy fat. So if you want more of these healthy recipes that taste amazing without sacrificing any flavor, why haven't you followed me? Low carb broccoli crusted pizza. Let's make it. I started with two bags of steamed broccoli, blended it in a food processor, laid it out on a cloth, and squeezed out as much excess liquid as I possibly could. To a bowl, I added some seasonings, Parmesan cheese, two eggs, almond flour, and mixed it up nice and well. Then I put it on a baking sheet with parchment paper, shaped it into a pizza like shape and made a crust. And I also put some to the side so I can make another medium pizza for my boyfriend. Baked it in the oven till it was firm. I'm using Ray's tomato sauce, Rao's, it's low carb. It was really good. Uh, added it to the pizza along with some shredded cheese and some chicken, just kept it super simple. Put it back in the oven and baked it till the cheese was melted. And this was delicious. You can make chicken marsala just as good as any restaurant, if not, better.
Eight ounces cremini mushrooms. Don't soak them. Wipe them. Damn paper towel. Don't disappoint me. Four cloves, minced garlic. One small shallot, minced. Pound the hump so we'll cook them. Kosher salt. Pepper. Do both sauce. All purpose flour. Medium high heat. Two tablespoons avocado oil. Oil shimmers. Add the chicken. Sear until golden, two minutes each side. Add a little more oil so it doesn't burn. One tablespoon avocado oil. Three tablespoons butter. Add the mushrooms. Salt. Saute five minutes. The garlic and the shallots. Half a cup marsala wine. One cup chicken stock. Half a cup heavy cream. Return the chicken, simmer five minutes. Remove the chicken, simmer three to five minutes until the sauce is thickened. Tarragon, because you're extra fancy. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make some keto or low carb uh, hot pockets. You're just gonna take a cup of mozzarella cheese, melt that. Once that's melted, set it aside, take a cup of almond flour, and then any seasonings you want. I use Italian seasoning and garlic powder. Next, I take a bean egg, pour that in and mix it up. Once that's mixed up, I'm going to add now my melted mozzarella cheese. This is also called fathead dough, if you guys could look it up too. Now I add some baking soda or baking powder, and I'm just going to roll it out till it's flat. Next, I'm going to cu cut the edges so it's a perfect rectangle, and then after that, cut my rectangles to make my hot pockets, and then down the middle as well. Then I'm going to take two pieces. The first piece, I'm going to add my toppings. This is just some leftover tomato sauce I made. I added also turkey, pepperoni, and mozzarella cheese. I added way too much cheese, but I learned that as I went. Now you close it like an empanada, and then you're going to bake this for 20 to 25 minutes. Here's the one and only appetizer recipe you'll ever need, prosciutto wrapped brie. We're going to put our prosciutto down on a cast iron, place our brie, and then top that with some pepper jelly. Wrap that up and put some of your favorite rub on top. We did the meat church honey bacon barbecue. Throw that on your grill at 300 degrees for about 45 minutes, and boy, does this come out great. It's a real crowd pleaser. You can't go wrong with it. Have you tried an open-faced fried zucchini? Start by cutting your zucchini slices, and now microwave for one minute so they get tender. Now pat the extra moisture. I like to use a Mexican blend cheese. Add about two to three tablespoons. Add about four zucchini slices or however many fit. And don't forget your seasonings. We have a little paprika, some onion powder, some pepper. And now you're gonna cook for about two and a half minutes. A little less cheese and just as crunchy and delicious. I was really craving pizza and this really hit the spot. Grab your mixer and that's gonna make it super easy to whip this recipe together. First, I added the cream cheese, the eggs, and the mozzarella cheese. Mix that well. Then I added the almond flour, Italian seasoning, garlic powder, and baking powder. Preheat your oven at 350 degrees. Make bite-sized little balls. Bake them for 30 minutes. And dip them in marinara sauce. Yum! You guys, this is the best grilled chicken you will ever have. If you don't have a grill, no worries. These are also great in the oven. Just cook it like 400 for about 30 minutes or until they're cooked through. First, make your marinade. Sometimes I add a tablespoon of sugar, but today I left it out because I was making these keto. Add your chicken thighs and marinate for at least four hours. I made eight to 10 chicken thighs because I have a really big family, but if you want, you can cut the recipe in half. Cook until they are no longer pink in the center, and guys, it's that easy. Enjoy. This is how you make the best Mexican rice. You're going to add olive oil, your rice. You're going to let it toast a little bit. Don't burn it, though. A can of tomato sauce. Do some math. If you added a cup of rice, you're going to add two cups of water. Some consomme de pollo, some garlic powder, and then you're going to add salt. You're going to cover that up for like five minutes, then add lime juice. Let it sit there for like 15 minutes, and boom, you got the best Mexican rice. You're welcome. Don't throw your cantaloupe seeds in the garbage. Lex make cantaloupe seed milk. Cantaloupe seeds are filled with magnesium, which is vital for a healthy heart. And since most people don't eat them, this is a great way to get its benefits. I removed the pulp from the seeds, and I'm placing it inside my blender. Next, I'm adding two pitted dates and about two cups of water. Blend this all up. Now it's time to strain it using a nut milk bag. You made a healthy plant milk with an ingredient you would have thrown away. This is a quick and easy recipe for chili oil noodles. It takes less than 10 minutes to make it. You need one teaspoon of Thai chili powder, quarter teaspoon of chicken bouillon, one whole garlic minced, and about four to five tablespoons of oil. Boil your favorite noodles and add two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sesame oil, a tablespoon of black vinegar, top with cilantro or green onions. When you think spinach artichoke dip, you think sour cream and mayo. Uh-uh. I'm gonna show you a way to do it without. Put your artichoke hearts in. Now stay with me. A cup and a fourth a cup of Alfredo sauce. That's the tricky part. A cup of mozzarella. 
and a fourth a cup of Parmesan. Get yourself some chopped spinach, 10 ounces. Throw that bad boy in there. Mine should have been a little bit more de -thawed. It was not. Take half of a block of cream cheese, four ounces. Throw that bad boy in there. I should have softened it. I did not, which made my stirring very difficult. Stir, 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 stir. I also had to start chopping. Um, so please, soften your cream cheese and de -thaw your spinach. It will make your life much easier. So after you get it all mixed up, I went ahead and added another half of the cream cheese because it tasted kind of saucy. Do that if you want. Throw it in a baking dish and voila. All right, guys, let's talk Nolan's barbecue shrimp. So we got a half a stick of butter, a couple of cloves of fresh garlic, juice from half a lemon, quarter cup of beer, third of a cup of Lee and Perry's Worcestershire and Sriracha, the hotter the better. Use a little Creole seasoning to go in there. We're gonna let that sauce reduce by half. Time for our shrimp. Using my boy Hot Rod's new uh, Creole seasoning he's got. Gonna dust them up, lay the shrimp in there. We're gonna let them go about two minutes, and then we're gonna flip them over. We're gonna let them go for another couple of minutes. In the meantime, I've got some butter that's been in the freezer, little cubes of butter. We're gonna add to that sauce to make it nice and silky smooth. We're gonna garnish with a little bit of fresh parsley get you some crusty bread, dip in that sauce, throw a shrimp on top, get you a bite, and holy smokes, guys. Money.